to start. You just go, hey, babe. That's one of our catchphrases. You know what I mean? Like, starting is awkward. Not for me. Really? <laughs> no, I don't find it awkward at all. I just go, hey, babe. Oh, you know I'm not a hey, um, babe kind of gal. So, hey, babe. How's it going? Hey, babe. You know, it's going really great because our merch just came out. <laughs> don't make me laugh. Because you know my, my tuberculosis will get triggered. I know your tuberculosis tuberculosis is tuberculosis tuberculosis yeah <laughs> yeah so i've been really sick yeah. and if you hear me coughing and sniffing and spluttering i'm sorry i'm covid negative to all the losers and haters i've been really um, sick too but uh, mine was just a panic attack so covid free as well our merch just dropped we have new merch on uh, the lucy and annabelle show.com i am so excited but this is a dream come true for me to um i've always wanted to make clothes and i know it's not like really making clothes but it's like just a little just dipping a little toe in the in the ocean yeah, I love you know? the designs that you and your nephew have spent a lot of time designing. And I'm really proud of it as well, even though I've just sat back with my feet up and a drink in my hand while you did all that. But <laughs> just smoking a cig. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling really excited for the listeners because a lot of people have been asking me, you know, when are you going to have something we can buy with all these cute slogans that have come from the show? Oh my God, I just said cute. I'm turning into Annabelle. So everybody head on over and see the debut items. We have many more coming. Go to www.thelucyandannabelleshow.com and get yours today. Exactly. All right. Well, I think okay. it's news time. It's not world news. It's not important news. It's Annabelle news. So Taylor Swift will not be... Submitting her version of the Fearless album for the Grammys next year. Uh, the original version was named Album of the Year in 2010, but she will not be able to repeat that feat at the 2022 event. Um, doesn't say why she's done it, but I think that's the correct thing to do. You've already won the awards for that album, so let somebody else have a chance. Classic Taylor Swift. Um, I, do you know I can't stand Taylor Swift? Do you? Are, what, are you? Are you a Swifty? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a Swifty. I her perseverance and her dedication as mm -hmm. a professional. I really admire her as a working woman and as a writer. Tell us how you feel, Annabelle. Well, I just I I find her super annoying. Um, did you did you watch the Taylor Swift documentary? No, I've never, I have, I don't know anything. I've worked with a lot of uh, her same uh, producers and writers in Nashville, lovely group of people, but no, I don't know about her. I don't know, I feel like Taylor Swift is like, uh, wearing like a human suit. <laughs> like, she's like, this is how to be a person. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, so... Um, I know you don't like it when I slander celebrities on here, so I'm not going to slander her. Knock Let's yourself out. It's your news. segment. It's your segment. No, 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 I'm not going to do it. I'll save it for another another day. This one actually sent me over the edge, like, with laughter. Um, Kylie Jenner's factory workers claim they're banned from looking her in the eye when she <laughs> comes to visit the factory. Um... So it says here that the workers at Spatz Laboratories, located in Oxnard, California, the manufacturer of Kylie Cosmetics, work in horrific conditions, which is a completely another subject. But there's this one woman that's Irene that's come forward to talk to the Sun News. Um, and she says, she would come by and watch us work to see what we did. Okay, seems normal. Before they would come in, our supervisors would tell us, you are not allowed to talk with them. You guys are supposed to keep on working. You guys are not allowed to take any pictures or ask any questions. We had to be quiet and continue working. They would come around and just watch us on machines filling up the makeup tubes. They wouldn't talk to us. They never talked to me. They would talk to the leads and just walk around and look at everything. It's not like she didn't see what the conditions were. So... Oh, here it says, it was messed up. We were doing her product and we couldn't even talk to her. 
We couldn't see her, and if we're doing her product, all the work is on us. She should be aware of that. So it sounds to me like Irene doesn't really understand the job description. This, so this to me is so fascinating. It's like, I'm sorry, did you, do you think that, that Kylie Jenner owes you some kind of relationship because you are in fact paid by a third party to work in a factory and pack cosmetic? Irene, get over yourself, babe. Get over yourself. But then it sounds like Irene's real problem is that working at Spatz Laboratories is a bit of a shitty job. Um, and it sounds like Irene isn't really made for factory work. Well, it says here, if you don't meet your quota by the end of the day, you're going to be laid off. Um, and she felt degraded. Uh, 12 hour days, they don't get rests. You know, it's all of this typical exploitation of cheap labour stuff, which yeah. is, the, for me should be the real story in this conversation. Not that, is that Kylie didn't. Yeah, is that people that work in factories are still being treated like it's the Victorian times and people that are out in the fields picking fruit aren't provided with free sunscreen, sun hats, water, uh, masks when there are fires and they're still paid like $2 a day. Like mm. that should be the conversation. But why would the Daily Mail or the Sun talk about that? You know, God forbid that people should start uh, thinking that maybe they should have some dignity in their lives and some rights. Um, so sorry, Irene, that you didn't get your picture with Kylie and you weren't allowed to look at her. That's very sad. And sorry to um, the Sun that they blamed it all on Kylie Jenner and totally misled that article, which could have actually been constructive. Completely. So uh, shocking. A Rupert Murdoch publication is uh, full of shit. What a shock. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. but it, Bit of royal news, <gasps> Megs. Royal news! Megs got a new deal with Netflix with her and Harry's production company, Archwell, for a show that I believe is going to be animated called Pearl, uh, which is what her name means in Welsh. Hmm. Uh, Pearl will be going on adventures of self-discovery and she, I think her character is going to be based on influential and important women throughout history um feminism yes Whoa. um great a little bit a little bit of a plot twist yesterday uh, is that harry's writing a tell-all so you suckers all thought that megan was going to be the one to throw a spanner in the works but it turns out harry is writing it and he said i'm not going to be writing it as the prince i'm going to be writing it as harry husband father uh, ugh, or whatever he said he was just all like he was all just like snap snap bitches yeah he doesn't um, yeah he's all about this he was real business on that oprah thing yeah he's gone rogue absolutely love absolutely it. love uh, when a family member goes rogue i can't even <laughs> even the ones in my family who are completely dysfunctional and like make my life hell yeah i'm just like my dude you're yeah fucking crazy fucking mad you respect are, you are crazy and you're just going your own way um front row seat best wishes for it. <laughs> best wishes to whatever the outcome is of that but i can't um, wait to read harry's book can i pre-order it it's not even written know. yet it's not even written can yet you, i want to pre-order it can you imagine the amount of money he's getting paid for that uh, well, good for them because he's been committed to carving out his own way for him and his family, and I'm happy for any monetary uh, opportunities that come their way. Are we keeping you awake, Annabelle? <laughs> She's over there fucking yawning. Jesus Christ! I can't wait to re uh, to write my tell-all book. It's going to be fabulous because I'm you're not going to. You keep saying this. You're not going to tell anything. You're too private. Oh, I you're will. You were, when are you going to do this? Because In like 30 years. Uh, <laughs> I, have to, I have to do this podcast for 30 years for you literally to say any fucking thing. Yes. I have to wait till everybody's dead. I can't tell everything I want to tell yet. If I fucking die before this book comes out, <laughs> I am going to haunt you literally within an inch of your life. <laughs> I'll be livid. All right, I'm listen. I'm going to become a... I'm going to become a poltergeist just for you. From the desk of Lucy. All right. The first hot story is 
A London actress named Abby Bella says that she hopes to normalize interspecies dating between humans and aliens. Okay? So, <laughs> you can't make me laugh. <laughs> My bronchitis. She claims that she fell for an alien after it swept her into her, its UFO and right off of her feet. Okay, so she's been super bored by the pandemic. She says she's unimpressed by the offerings on Earth when it comes to men. And she joked online about wanting an alien to abduct her. Abduct me, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and on May 31st, she claims that she heard a voice in her dreams that commanded her to wait in the usual spot by her window. Right after midnight, a flying saucer swept into view, and before she knew it, she wasn't in her bedroom. She was beamed up to the UFO. She says she encountered five aliens on the UFO. They were tall and slender. She Gang bang. She couldn't see them clearly. There was one that connected with her. She's gushing about this. She's describing the feelings that, as being in love times a hundred. She says, I didn't get his name, but we feel exactly the same about each other. So, she didn't get his name though no so sadly it dropped her off after 20 minutes she's really really upset about the gaping differences between aliens and Earthmen. she's oh, saying dang. that the aliens give us extra quality and care and men on earth just tell lies and have double standards <laughs> she was only with him for 20 minutes she was only with this man for 20 minutes so what is she well, talking about you just don't get it annabelle don't hate, okay? All right, so that is our t our top story tonight. This one, nothing has ever been meant for you more because you know how you love your McDonald's chicken nuggies. If you're going to actually say something bad about them, fuck off. No, no, no. It's nothing bad. Actually, I want to go get them right after we record this. Here <laughs> is the headline. Iowa man calls in a bomb threat because he didn't get sauce for his chicken McNuggets. Only in Iowa. Police say an Iowa man attempted to get revenge on his McDonald's after he was shafted out of sauce for his chicken McNuggets. He allegedly threatened to blow up the restaurant and punch an employee. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like there were drugs involved. <laughs> Sounds like a Lucy Walsh move. Yeah. He tried to flip the tables, but they're attached to the floor at McDonald's, so yeah. he couldn't. So he, could, so he just said, I'm going to blow you up. Exactly. Instead. He's 42 oh, wow. years old. He called them after he had left and, and threatened to drop a bomb on the place. Where is he getting this bomb? And where is he dropping it? Where is he dropping it from? He was arrested. Okay. And then he was released because his bail was paid. That's actually stressed me out. Um, right, that was great news. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Both, all the news was excellent today. All right, so today we are talking about red flags. Red flags, people. Red We've flags. We've all seen them. We've all seen them. We've all We've ignored them. We've all ignored them. them. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> let me just, let me just pull up my notes. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yes, we have ample notes on this subject because we are experts in red flags oh, and ignoring, red, and flags ignoring red flags. Does anybody ever actually pay attention to red flags? Yeah, me now, but never before in my life. And I literally only think it's because I've gone through what I've gone through. I'm just like, I don't have fucking time for this. I honestly think we get sent the same lesson again and again in in a different form you know until we learn the lesson and then every now and again you're going to get reminders from the universe saying did you it is a sticking you mm -hmm. know I, I believe that anyway you know I know that I've seen the same man in my life again and again and again and I've seen him in my family I've seen him in my romantic life I've seen him in my work life until I learn the lesson me too um, let's get into red flags in a romantic relationship um, we heard a lot from you guys. Yeah, we heard a lot from people. Thank you for writing in. I feel like um, we should talk about what a red flag is. The definition of a red flag, a red flag is used as a warning of danger. A warning of danger. One crops up in your relationship. Little red flag. Somebody does something that's, that is 
sparking a instinct in you, a reaction, something that's telling you, huh, this seems off. I'm glad you just used the word instinct. Wouldn't you say that's what a red flag is? That feeling that comes up is actually your intuition speaking to you and telling you something. Yeah. I think we're yeah, in the definitely. habit of bulldozing over our intuition. No, I mean, everything in the world is designed for us not to listen to ourselves. Like binge watching television, binge eating. Uh, I know I'm like obsessed with it, but like the world has turned into Costco. It's all instant gratification. It's... You know, there's no time to sit and reflect and mull things over. It's all next, 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 next. And because we live in this instant gratification culture and society, uh, sometimes what's more important than is this a healthy relationship? Is this good for me? Is this what I really want? It's the let me just skip to the bit where it's the idea of what I want and I'm just going to shoehorn it into being that at whatever cost and I want people to see it as what I you know want it to be and I want to feel the way I want to feel about it regardless of what the facts are of the relationship regardless of the dynamic um you know one thing that obviously I have been thinking about as far as relationships are and romantic relationships is like I have been in two long-term relationships. The last one was a marriage. Mm -hmm. Never in my life did I think I was going to be dating again. Mm. Yeah, and, yeah, of course not. You know, and when I got into my first long-term relationship, dating apps weren't a thing. No. And then I quickly got into my relationship. I kind of relationship hopped at that point into my marriage. And so I've never... I mean, well, I was on Raya for a summer between my ex you were? And, and Ryan. Yeah, I was on Raya. And that was so funny and stupid. And <laughs> the people on there are like way too gorgeous for me to be on there. It felt very much out of my depth. How many dates did you go on? I went on no dates. It's terrifying. Oh. These men were, they were intimidatingly good looking. I was just like, I can't, I, I just, no, I couldn't. Yeah, it's too it's scary probably, for me. Uh, don't people post like pictures of themselves twenty years ago and stuff? No, there's like really sexy men on there, and I can't. I don't know how to act around. Like if I fancy somebody, I don't know how to act right. You want to talk about getting your <laughs> pussy on straight? My pussy has left the building. If I'm around <laughs> a handsome man, I'm literally just like. I can't, my words don't come out. Well, maybe you need to order our get your pussy on straight phone case so that you can remind yourself. Yeah, I already have. <laughs> <laughs> One of our merch items. But the point that I'm making is that dating apps and all that has put us in this instant gratification society and it mindset really when it comes to love and and romance and intimacy and I see people I know spending two weeks talking to somebody constantly non-stop on the phone that they've never met before mm -hmm. and they know everything about them before they've even gone on the first date yeah. which I find to be completely dysfunctional you know so much of falling in love with somebody is the slow process of getting to know them this constant communication and divulging of every fact about oneself before you've even met this person mm -hmm. Of course you're not going to have a, a positive outcome. You know, I would say nine out of ten times. You know, a lot of people have do find relationships and get married and engage from these apps. But I just see my friends getting so disheartened. People think that sharing every fact about your life is intimacy. And that's actually not what intimacy is at all. No. Intimacy is those no. human moments. And you can't get that from the internet. And that takes time. There aren't shortcuts it takes and it time. takes time. You have to lay the groundwork. And also attraction, physical attraction builds through spending time with somebody. Yeah. You know, it's a fact. It's like, you know, for instance, with Ryan Brady, I remember very well getting to know him as co-workers and then friends and I didn't fancy him at first, mm -hmm. physically. And then I remember the very moment that I did, I was at Mel's diner and he was doing some elaborate story and just like <laughs> gesticulating and being so wacky and crazy. And I was just like, oh no, 
<laughs> I fancy this man. Oh my god. Uh, and that was from hundreds of hours of phone calls and yeah. seeing each other and a few times at work meetings and dinners and things. The intimacy was built on the phone and yeah. the attraction was built over a, the course of many meetings. And it's, of course, you're going to swipe. So it's like, no, I'm not my type, not my type, not my type. Not Okay, well, but you don't know he's your type until you've seen the way he looks um, at when the sun is setting or the way he holds his fork or, you know... What does his, how does he react to a good wine? Or what? how does he brush his hair out his face? Or what's his little quirks? Like those are the things that form physical attraction for yeah. me and, and then create intimacy. Um, yeah. It, it ties into last week's episode because we were talking about the disconnect from self with spirit. Everything's designed for us to look outward outward, 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 and instead of inward. And this leads right to red flags in relationships. When you do connect to self, you can hear your own voice and you are in touch with your intuition and you can actually mm. recognize red flags. So it's no wonder we're not good at recognizing red flags because we're not listening to ourselves. Yeah, trusting your instinct. Exactly, it's trusting your instincts and it exists in every relationship, whether it's romantic or not. Mm -hmm. So let's let's get into the romantic first. We had a lot of great write-ins. Yeah, what I sticks love out you to guys you? Responses. Um, the first one I've got written down here, which is really good, is when they act different around other people than they do when they're at home with you. Um, yeah. I think that that's a really scary situation to be in and I've been in that situation before where I was with a guy who we would go out and we would go to parties and stuff and it was like I didn't exist and when I confronted him about it he'd be like I just want to be with somebody who can like be independent and go to the party and just mingle around on their own and do their own thing and I was like, yeah, I can do that and I want to do that. But I'd also like to spend time with you at the party and have a drink with you and talk to people with you and have ex the experience with you. We've come to this party together. And I was made to feel like I was like clingy, crazy, insecure, um, lacking in independence because I wanted to spend time with this man at a party. Um yeah. So it was like, when we were out, it was just like, yeah, 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 you're like my buddy, my chum, whatever. And then when it was behind closed doors, love of my life, can't get enough of you, I'm obsessed with you, I'm addicted to you. Mm. That is very confusing. And very. It's a huge red flag, in my opinion. Yeah, he wanted it both ways. He wanted his cake and eat it too, as they say. Have you ever had that? Um, no, I haven't been with a romantic partner that, that's done that. Were there a lot of other things that went along with that? What other kind of red flags came along in that relationship? And let me ask you, how long did you stay there? And did you take that red flag into account and actually make decisions from it? Or did you just allow it to happen? So in my past, what I've done is I've very much like let the red flags tot up and then I reach my breaking point and I'm out. And that is not the best way to handle things. It's definitely been a move of mine where I'll just, I'm out. When mm. I'm out, I'm out, I'm done. You're not going to hear from me again. It's over. Like, don't like snip, snip. So was there um, any constructive conversation where you tried to handle of that course, with the of person? Course, yeah, I and mean, I, would I, it just turn I into spoke, a fight? It would turn into complete gaslighting of me being crazy. insecure, yeah, and crazy, and like, um, and then I would just be like, "Oh my god, yeah, I am being insecure. Like, I should be able to just go and be at the party by myself and whatever, whatever, you know." And then on the flip side of that, I think. Um, when a guy is really nice to you when you're out and in front of other people and then behind closed doors is cold to you and doesn't treat you well. Mm, you yeah, know, that's not, yeah. It's not um, an okay situation. It's 
a huge red flag and something that if you are experiencing like you need to bounce out of that and I think this is one of the things that it took me a long time to understand about dysfunctional or abusive people is that 95% of the time these are lovely people Mm -hmm. in my experience Mm -hmm. but that 5% abusive kind of manipulative gaslighting behavior yeah can ruin your life and 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 shadow everything and it's so um toxic that it rots everything from like the foundations in the ground to the top and it takes time but it 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 will rot the whole structure eventually yes yes um and i think that that's just something to really really be aware of is is that yeah I see one fl- red flag okay I see another one okay well you know soon the whole house is going to be painted red <laughs> exactly I think when you trust yourself enough to trust what you're getting and what you're feeling and what's right for you your boundaries and you bring it up with the person to have a constructive conversation about it and they don't respond well to that I think that's mm. out I think that's, that's a red flag. Gotta go. Time. That's a fucking red flag. If every time you try and raise something with your romantic partner and they're turning it around and making it about something that's wrong with you, yes. it's like that's a fucking red flag. Yes. Um, and actually, in answer to your question, what made me realize that I had become completely desensitized to all of this stuff and had been ignoring all of these red flags was going out for a drink with an old school friend who I thought was gay and. So I wasn't thinking it was, like, any type of thing. Like, I was just reconnecting with an old school friend. I thought he was gay. Mm. Turns out he wasn't. And we had a really, really, like, strong spark when we went out for this drink. And I was still in that relationship. And the drink turned into dinner. The dinner turned into ice cream and walking around Soho and whatever. And over the course of that evening, the way that that man treated me and spoke to me in relation to the person behind the counter at the ice cream place or the waitress or uh, over dinner that is one of the things that made me realize like wait a minute when I'm out with this man that I've been with I'm not being treated right this is how it's meant to feel and how it's how I'm meant to be related to Mm -hmm. in order in you know in respect to like other people outside of our dynamic Mm -hmm. um and that was a big eye opener for me, and it like really fucking shocked me. Um, and I actually expressed it to my friend that I was with that night, and I just said, "This is really like throwing me for a loop." And um, and he said to me <laughs> something I'll never forget. He said, "Are you going to be in this situation a year from now?" And my stomach dropped. Wow. Were you able he to said, answer you- that? No, but the answer inside of me was screaming, no. Right. No, 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 no. I cannot be in this a year from now. Yeah. I couldn't say it because I was still so in it with this yeah. other man. Yeah, ooh, that's so tricky. That's what happens um, is your intuition is going to tap lightly. It's going to whisper to you, mm-hmm. and then it's going to speak, and then it's going to start raising its voice, and then it's going to be screaming Scream. at you, yeah. punching you. It's going to punch you in the face until you wake <gasps> up. If you betray yourself to continue in the situation when the red flags are clear and your intuition is screaming at you, you will create a living hell for yourself and a danger zone to forsake Uh. yourself, to get that love no matter what. Or that idea of love, like that. The idea of of it, exactly. It's not. It's not love. So you couldn't say that then because you weren't ready yet you weren't willing yet to protect yourself above what you were getting from that person well above him next one unwillingness to make quality time together what do you think about that lucy unwillingness to make quality time together if people want to see you they'll make time do you know what lucy we're all fucking busy that's right that if they go out of communication claiming that they're busy, that is a major red flag. First of all, they're implying that they're busy and you're not, like you're saying, Annabelle. And second, 
if you want to connect with somebody, you will. We all know the difference. We're not stupid. Yeah, I think I think this one's really interesting for sure. I was recently uh, chatting with a man and um, this was a big one, which was like, he was just busy all the time. And like I just said to you, we're all it, busy. It's called emotionally unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called um, it's called he's not busy, he's unavailable. Exactly. For you. Move on. Um and I actually changed his name in in my phone to unavailable for you. I love just, that. Not like dickhead, not shit no, no. face, or fuck face, like nothing like just to remind myself like this person is unavailable for you. And that exactly. goes for a man or a woman or a friend or whatever it is. It's like oh, sorry, I didn't text you back for three days. I've been so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Okay, I don't fucking care. Oh. My husband and my best friend just died and I'm still finding time to text you, you fucking piece of shit. When I did hear from him occasionally or whatever it was or when I would find myself going to reach out to this man to text him to be like, hey, how's it going? His name would come up as unavailable for you and it would just stop me immediately because so I'm like, bitch, you're really going to walk into this thing where you are just literally setting yourself up for somebody to disappoint you I've had enough disappointments in the last year of my life. I cannot take another fucking man disappointing me. I'm sorry, I can't. Mm -hmm. And so this one is like really, I've lived this one now like recently and I can really feel it. And the one thing I'll say, and especially about this dynamic with this guy is now that I'm not speaking with him anymore, I've realized that all of the signs were there, all of the red flags were there from the beginning, from day one. My instinct was like immediately uh, we can telling me. Always see it from when we get oh past God. it, can't we? It's so when clear. I go through when I go through my journals with every guy I've ever spoken to, every guy I've ever been with that's been dysfunctional or toxic or whatever or unavailable. From the first time I write about them in the journal, the red flag is there, and it never. Somebody wrote in and said this. The problems you have at the beginning are the problems you will have until the dying fucking day. Exactly. Of They're not going to change. This man, he never lied, never lied to me. He never misled me. Well. He... <laughs> I was there for it too. Okay. I say okay. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a, li there was a little bit was of a misleading. little misleading. A little, going but on. like he never lied to me. But he was. Here's the thing that I didn't do, and this has been a huge lesson for me in the world of red flags and and men and whatever is. Listen very carefully to the words somebody is using. Yeah. Because not once did this man tell me anything that wasn't true to his behavior or who he was i chose to hear it and interpret it in mm. the way i wanted to to Oof. project it to be the thing that i wanted to hear and i wanted to experience and i wanted to see he didn't lie to me he didn't really do anything wrong i mean he did whatever he did i'm not okay but he <laughs> <laughs> no, I I'm understand not gonna, what like, you're saying. Man. I understand. What I you're chose saying, yeah. to to make it into something that it wasn't. Exactly. He let me know that he was unavailable for me. He let me know that he wasn't gonna be texting me or making time for me. He let me know everything. I just chose to run past those red flags like I was doing a goddamn relay race. Isn't it fascinating? So many times, girlfriends will come to you and 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 tell you what he said and they'll go so he said this what do you think it means and it's like girl are you it dumb, means what girl? it said it means he's not into you he's telling you he is telling you and we still don't get it no you no. cannot see it when you're in it and as a friend sometimes you feel bad you just want to like let them live out their fantasy because they're not going to listen to anything no they're not i just had literally i just saw a friend i hadn't seen in ages and she started telling me about this man that she's been speaking to and seeing exact same situation she's known this guy for 10 years they've been friends blah blah, blah the whole thing it was like verbatim my experience and I was like, wait, what's this guy's name? And we both started laughing. <laughs> it was word, like, 
word for word, action for action, same thing. Like, this is a type of person. And... Yeah, it's called emotional. We talked about it. She actually, like, she actually responded to one of the um, little, the red flag thing on my story. And she was, like, laughing. Oh, really? Um, Because she's, like, checked out of it now. Like, she's finally this week. She's, like, checked out. And I'm, like, good. I'm glad you have. Like, it was hard to see you doing that thing that that I just did and trying to tell yourself. It's hard to watch people. Even when we had lunch, she was, like, well, you know, he, you know, there's, like, a surgery coming up and... And, you know, I'm just going to see how it goes after the surgery. Oh, and I'm no. like, so you're going to hope that, like, maybe he's going to wake up from the surgery and be, like, a different person? Or, like, what is it that you're... Is it a, is it a lobotomy that he's going to be having? Yeah. Because <laughs> I know, it's not... The, the fucking surgery is not changing jack shit. Why do we do this? You're willing to accept scraps from a table rather than have a seat at the table and eat a full course meal. You would rather, you're willing to sit on the floor under the table and accept scraps that people might drop from their meal. That is a self-esteem issue. It is. It's that whole, like, accepting crumbs. It's like a pat on the head. Do you know what? This is my motherfucking table. And I'll let you know when you can take a seat at my table. And that is my attitude now. Yes, I'm not going from a man. I'm not going from a man like Ryan Brady, who treated me like, I was the most important thing in his life. Mm-hmm. Because you were. I'm not. I'm not. Get, sorry. Yeah. No. Standards your, are higher. Your Bar's seat, been raised. Your seat is <laughs> yeah. at the head of the table. Yeah. And I'll let you know if you can take a seat. You're not. It's not like. It's not exactly. like that. Um. So. That is a really good one because yeah, if is. somebody isn't making time for you or they're busy or whatever it is, I'm sorry, babe. It's because they're not interested in you. And there's nothing. And here's the thing. My friend said this to me the other day. And I did this to myself as well with this other man's is what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Why aren't, why aren't I interesting enough? Do you know what? It's got nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with you. It's got nothing to do with me. This is this type of person. My friend said to me, you know, and I did this as well. You know, one day maybe they're just gonna, he's gonna meet a girl that makes him like change. And who said, somebody actually said that? Yeah, she said that because <laughs> oh. no, but she said that, and that's the thing I said. Babe, I understand. I understand. I'm not. Of course, I at felt her. no. I felt I'm that just, way as well. Yeah. I f- I felt that way in that situation. It's well, like, that's well, what women do. Me? We like, think that we're going to change maybe them. Maybe there's there's other girls going to like make him, you know, act the way that I just wish she would with me, and it's just because I'm not I'm not good I'm enough. I'm not this or that. If I could only no, figure it out, not. then you are not you are not deficient. This is not a deficiency in you. This is that this is not a match for you. And actually, what I've come to realize now is that that person, that man, wasn't good enough for me. Because if he was good enough for me, he would have fucking texted back. If he was good enough for me, he would have taken me out for dinner. If he was good enough for me, it wouldn't have been so hard. What you just described is my lifelong pattern that I've drawn in because of my father. Because when my dad left when I was a kid, I took it on myself. I said, oh, it's because I wasn't good enough. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. It's a, it's a low self-esteem issue. So yeah. my pattern of, of, of pulling men in doesn't have to do with the men. It's because that is where I was vibrating. And so that's what I was attracting over and over to work out that lesson, like you said. When I started to handle my relationship with my dad, I pulled in a different kind of man because I changed. Therefore, everything Mm -hmm. in my life started to attract differently. And Will came into my life, a man who Mm. cherishes me. And that was because I started to handle the core relationship with my father. Not in speaking to my dad, because it wasn't. It had nothing to do with my dad. It was within Within me. It was with reclaiming my power, knowing that I didn't do anything wrong to make that person go away. It's in you, and that's the thing. As much as the, the deficiencies aren't in you. The answer is in you. The yeah. work that needs to be done is in you. And the work isn't making yourself more X, Y, and Z to be more approachable or acceptable or interesting to this man or this woman. The work is valuing yourself enough to know that this situation isn't good enough for you and this person isn't good enough for you. Yes. It's not meeting your standards, so it's time to keep it moving. You know, this man is is never going to be changed by a woman. What's going to happen is he's going to meet a woman who can put up with his behavior. Yeah. And that 
you know, God bless that woman. Yeah. Um, is all I have to say about that. There's a wonderful so. book that's a, a Kabbalistic book uh, in the study of Kabbalah, for those who know that. Um, it's called The Spiritual Rules of Engagement. And it talks about how to date spiritually. And it talks about these things. It says, a man's only purpose is to spread light, to spread light in the world. He literally does it with his sperm. And that's mm -hmm. the concept of a man's purpose in the world. A woman's role is different. A woman's role is to cultivate, to nurture, to nourish. So a woman cannot change the way that a man spreads his light. All she can do is decide if the way he spreads his light is going to work for her. And nourish her. Yes. And if it's not going to, then let him go. He's not the man for you. But you cannot, yeah. and that's the mistake women make. And men, I'm sure. People. They try, they, they, they think that they can change the way that somebody is spreading their light. Last thing I want to say before you read another one. This is no moral judgment. Red flags do not mean that somebody is a good or a bad person. No. Because look, we all, we all, we have shown red flags to somebody we've been dating. <laughs> Oh my None of God. us, none of us are exempt, okay? We all have narcissistic tendencies. We're all assholes sometimes. We all could mm. do we all could do better when it comes to mm. white lies or being on time or treating people nice in public. We are simply discussing this fact of intuition and how it speaks to us at the beginning and getting in the habit of listening to it, right? Yeah. Definitely. I'm very interested in something I've been thinking about a lot recently and reading about is the divine masculine. What's that? Um, it's, let me get the exact, let me not fuck this up. <laughs> you know, I am very interested in the divine masculine moving forward. The divine masculine is a leader with his divine feminine and within his community. He does not lead by accumulating power or control, but rather leads from a place of love and security. The divine masculine doesn't see leadership as hierarchy. Oh, I like the Let's sound see, of that. So. Where does this come from? Where did you find this concept? Well, Jeff and I talk about it a lot because we talk about what I think in sort of lay terms would be considered toxic masculinity and toxic femininity. Jeff is Annabelle's but... therapist for all of you who are joining us for the first time. <laughs> I always feel the need to say that. <laughs> um, and we talk about that a lot and part of that conversation and obviously before what the modernization of that is toxic blah 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 the opposite of that is the divine feminine and the divine masculine so mm. let's look at what the divine feminine is the divine feminine is connected to the moon the sun the stars and the earth she is in unison with her inner self and hears all the prophecies of her body the divine feminine never fights against her own nature and is our wisest side the core of our intuition and knowledge so I'm just really interested in that at the minute. The way the world should be. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's move on Can to Can we this just next... um, please mention a few of these hilarious ones? Somebody wrote in and said uh, a red flag is someone who doesn't listen to the Lucy and Annabelle show. So you huge know what? Huge red flag, you guys. I, that's a huge, huge red, flag. red flag. Run, run. Get out now if they don't listen. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so these are good. Um, nitpicking, like hen pecking, being overly critical. Um, God, I fucking hate that. I hate being um, subjected to it and I hate watching it. There is nothing more cringe to me in this life than like being at dinner with friends or being out with people and watching somebody, whether it's a female friend or a male friend, like hen pecking their partner and criticizing and being like that's not right or you don't say it like that or you know humiliating their partner basically i totally understand what you mean virgos are so difficult i know virgos is that what it is <laughs> <laughs> i don't know no i'm teasing i'm teasing virgos we love our virgos come on now come on it's the biggest stuff where it's just like where you're 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 willing to humiliate your partner in order to be right about something or correct them about something and it's just that to me is the grossest most unattractive small dick energy thing i can think that's of. that's nasty <laughs> that's just nasty 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 um what about this what do you think about this too clingy 
too clingy. Well, you know, we were. Have you ever had? Have you ever had somebody too clingy? <laughs> um. Yeah, I have. I have, but it's not their fault. Because they were just... No, because they're sweet. I know they're sweet. Like, no, it's not their <laughs> fault. It's In the past, I was very hurtful to partners who were clingy. I really punished them for it. I, I was very cold, and I caused a lot of pain, I think, that I really regret now. So as I've gotten older, I try to be very compassionate for what people yeah. need and very gentle with people mm. and that's a big lesson I've learned one one relationship in particular was a lovely lovely man he's so kind and I absolutely ruined him because he was so no. he was so clingy for my for my oh, no. needs and it got to the point where he he, you know, he was like the woman and I was like the man. And that's yeah. not a good way to feel. It's uncomfortable for both of you. And nobody's done anything wrong. You're just different people. And when you... Tr but you were a bitch about it. I was a bitch about it, exactly. I was not compassionate. I was not nice to him in the breakup. And I've always really regretted that. We've stayed friends, but I've always felt that, that guilt. I've always felt like I don't deserve to be friends yeah. with him because I mistreated his heart and that's something I think is important above all is that no matter what even if you are totally different than someone and you know it's not going to work be kind be gentle yeah somebody's heart yeah is a valuable thing Mm. people's hearts are valuable and they need to be treated with love and understanding and kindness even when you're breaking up with them mm. so yeah, that's what that's I got really, from that relationship that's food for thought, but, to be fair. yeah it's really important we all know how devastating it is when somebody mistreats our own heart and I don't want to impart I don't want to pass that pain on ever again mm. even if the person is evil to me well maybe if they're evil but you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I have to be mindful of that I can get quite cold um ice queen in a relationship like I can too I'm like that I'm like don't I don't want to shower with you please don't touch me in bed it's too hot all that kind of stuff and then in the past instead of just saying that like in a nice way being like hey you know I get really hot in bed or just this is my like exactly. resting exactly there's a nice time. way to I don't say really it god there's a nice way to say it instead of to be like can you not fucking talk like can you get off me oh my god it's not necessary to speak like it's this it's not and i it has a lot to do with tone with tone yeah, it really does and i don't want to say too much about any parental <laughs> parentals of mine but the tone in my household sometimes growing up was very like tight and hard like this like don't do that kind of thing and yeah. That was just because of the way that my parents were raised by their parents because we yeah. passed these things down. And so my tone gets very hard and tight like that sometimes. And I, mm. I have to watch it. And Will will say to me, like, can you please speak differently to me right now? Like, don't use that tone with me. And I have yeah. to go, it's oh, my God. Says that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, can you please pass the mayonnaise? How dare you fucking speak to an English man with a tone when asking for the mayonnaise? Cast the what mayonnaise. What is wrong with you? Fucking shit. It says it doesn't belong. Mayonnaise is for English people only. So the fact that he's even going to pass it to you, he's giving you a gift. I know, I know. Yeah, so that that's a big one. That clingy. I had the opposite. I was I, I was in a house where it was like, no, no. Really? <laughs> like, just like, <laughs> just like floppy, floopy, doopy lovey dovey no boundaries like free love like ooh, you know <laughs> just all like that so my the reason i'm like that is that classic thing of like i feel like you either become it or you become the opposite or you, of it yeah, i think it's because of that because i'll just be like oh get the fuck away from me like don't touch me don't look at me that's don't the, stop following me around yeah like, that's the other thing about what we consider red flags is you don't know somebody's life and what has made them this way. We all have these defense mechanisms in place that look like red flags on the outside. 
And that's what comes from spending time together, not getting to know each other on a dating app, but actually spending time. You get to know each other's lives and your past and your history and what makes somebody who they are. And then the red flags make more sense. Now, the bottom line is when you come together to talk about it, if the person's not receptive, that is not going to work. That's the real red flag. Why are you covering Um, your hands and rocking back and forth during this conversation? um, Because I'm hot and it's like, this is like really stressing me out. Not in a bad way, just in a like, just in a like wit. Like, it's just stressful. You know, this is just a confronting conversation and, you know, I'm not married anymore. And so... uh, So you're starting over, do you feel like? Yeah, I... And you're going to have to go through red flags all over again. Yeah, I'm just thinking, fuck. Fuckity fuck shits. Well, why don't we move over to the friendship category to give you some relief right now? I I don't, it's not, you can't avoid my reality. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, um, I know, I know. Let's just see if there's... I know it's um, a tender thing for you right now, Annabelle. I, I, I understand that. It, I can't even. Well, it's just it's just something to imagine. Adjust to is an, is like <sighs> there is all of this, and it's fine. It's I think it, I think it's more intense for me because I was number one. You know, I was treated so well that I've almost forgotten how bad it can be out there. <laughs> Fucking so, A. You said it. That um, is so true. So I, th- so I'm getting stressed out. Okay. All right. All right. I'm sweating enough, and this is stressing me out. So let's move on to friendship stuff. Let's visit um, the old friendship realm. Wow. You know what? <sighs> this is going to be spicy for you. This this round. Oh no. And what I'll say is, I don't know. I feel like friendship breakups and friendship problems are almost worse than romantic problems i get so sad when i've had stuff with friends in the past and it's really rare for me i don't really get in fights with people really so yeah the friendship stuff stresses me out it makes me really sad really uh yeah it really does when i have problems with friends and um i think maybe because it's like really rare for me as well that when it does happen i'm just like whoa What's happening? I know. You know, I think for a, for most of my life, I wasn't aware that red flags existed in relation in, in uh, friendships. In friendships, yeah, yeah. I think. Does anybody else feel that way? Who's listening? Like, I just that was invisible to me. I just thought, no, you you just become friends with, and you put up with everything, and you put up with everything. Exactly. You're supposed to love yeah. your friends. That's something that fucks with you. You you're supposed to love people and be understanding Ooh, that's another lie to the self that makes you accept red flags damn this one is savage and it's pretty spicy for me what when you are the person making all the effort Ooh. or you're the one always checking it checking in how are you and then you realize you know i feel like there's always that point in the relationship where you realize like Fucking hell, if I didn't text this person and check in, I would never hear from them. And that's always a really sad moment. I, I, when I love somebody and care about them, I really invest in them. Like, I will, I will invest everything into you. Mm -hmm. But only for certain people, and that's the thing, is because I am quite wary of people, when I do find a person that I connect with, and then I get disappointed by them or hurt by them. I take it way too personally and mm-hmm. way too deep, mm-hmm. I think. And I don't really do very well with disappointment. Well, here's the thing. Guess what? I'm going to be upsetting people too. I'm going to be disappointing people mm-hmm. too. It's, yeah. it's a two-way street. Exactly. It's just, I just feel when I'm in that zone, I'm just like, oh my God. It's like, I'm so, I'm so wounded, you know? And it's, mm-hmm. it's, um... I find the friend stuff really hard. Really, really hard. But anyways, when you're the person making all the effort, I feel like we've all been there. I mean... got to step back at a certain point and go, if I wasn't keeping this thing alive, it would be dead. 
So mm. what? And that is a really sad realization to have. It's a, it's mm. a difficult one. That really is. I find what goes along with you always being the one to make the plans. And I know you're going to think I'm talking about you, Annabelle, and including you in this. I'm not. You exempt because we do the podcast at your house. What goes into this topic for me as well is when you always hang out at one person's house and it's not I, balanced. Where the plan- I the, completely agree. I hate that. That to me is a red flag because not not even not against not anything to do with them but for myself i know that i'm giving my power away it's on their terms it's on their terms exactly no i don't take it personally at all like i come i drive to la you drive to my house that's like the deal do you know what i mean that's how we you and i record the podcast at your house that's how it goes it's easy we know the deal we know the drill also i've got ac you have ac <laughs> and i don't oh my god we tried to do the podcast at my house the first time and we were <laughs> drenched. Because we can't have an AC machine. It has to be central air. Otherwise, you can hear it. We just ended up laying on my bed with Ivy Sparkle Puss and drinking <laughs> champagne instead. So that wasn't going to work. But also, you've been through a major loss where you're not going to venture far from home for the time being. And mm. so you are not who I'm talking about. But yeah, I find that I've, yeah, no, I know I've that. done that. And we talk about this too, how there's different dynamics in friendships where there's always, there's like an alpha friend usually who's like right. setting the tone yeah. for everything. And then there's yeah. people following that. That's just the way humans are. Yeah. It happens naturally in, yeah. in a tribe. Yeah. I think that it's, I don't know that I would describe it as giving my power away more than as much as just a mutual respect of like, I don't want to always be the one driving 45 minutes or I don't always want to be the one having to like shuffle my shit around and you know schlep over to wherever the fuck you live or whatever it is but I also know that I do have friends who I love being at their houses and I would actually rather be at their house yeah that happens too of course you know so so it's interesting and then also the house I grew up in is very much like a hub and everyone comes there mm -hmm. and wants to be there. So I've been on both ends of it. Do you know what I mean? I've been on the end where it's like everyone wants to come to your house and I've been on the end where I'm like, you know what I don't really, really don't want to fucking do today is drive from East LA to fucking Hollywood mm -hmm. is what I don't want to do today. Um, yeah, I've been on both ends of it too, I suppose. I think yeah. you just said it perfectly. What we are talking about ultimately is relationships built on mutual respect. Mm. It does hurt me when I when I have that realization, like, if I don't reach out, they wouldn't be reaching out. Yeah, that's a tough and one. And then the other thing with effort that has, that has been, I've thought about this a lot since I've lived in America, obviously, because to maintain my friendships in England and in other places, it takes a lot of effort. This is why your friendship circle should really be small because friendships that are healthy and good and nourishing take a lot of work mm -hmm. and a lot of time and attention. They don't just grow on their own, you know, I, I personally feel. Um, and when you're far away from people, you're not having that day-to-day -day interaction with them. You're not meeting here, you're not at the pub at the weekend, you're not at the cinema, you're not doing bits and bobs together. So you don't have that level of connection that's just from bopping around together and having shared experiences. So one of the things in a long distance friendship that I've realized is, you know, and that hurts my feelings is like, I'll share something with somebody, whether it's music or a podcast or a book. And I, I want you to read it. I want you to listen to it. I want you to tell me because I want us to connect about something yeah, it's an intimacy you know and that's something that I've really really realized and and you know I'll make the effort to watch YouTube channels that my friends like that I'm not interested in or whatever just so I can have something to it's a sharing to to chat about that isn't like oh I'm going to tell you everything about what's going on with me and you're going to tell me everything so just the thing the thing that would replace just being together right you know and so that for me goes in the effort category. Yeah. Is if your friend's really enthusiastic about 
something or a band or a podcast, like give it a listen or have a flick through the book or yeah. just give it a glance so that you have an idea about what they're talking about. I think that that stuff matters yeah. and that is along the lines of something that somebody else said, which is taking an interest in parts of yourself or parts of your friend, I should say, that are outside of your relationship yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah, it's really important. Uh, it's really important. That's the mutual respect and that's investing in each other and caring, caring. Yeah. Caring about, even yeah. even if it's not your cup of tea. Will and I have yeah. completely opposite interests. You know, you find yeah. ways to make a relationship work because you, you love each other, friendships or otherwise. It's really important. Yeah. I agree completely. Okay, the next thing. Oh, this is spice level. Emotional dumping. Oof. A friend calling you and just they're crying or they're just like, can you know, can you talk? I really need to talk to you. And there's just to tell you this whole thing that's happened without just checking in. Hey, you know, like at the beginning of the podcast today, I said to you, hey, do you have time for personal chat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just checking in. Exactly. To see if it's okay, if I can give you a download on what's been going on with me. Yeah. You know, and it's not like, I don't want to go into this fucking world of, you know, it gets so um made into such a thing of like consent, you know, consent goes into, moves into this friendship zone. It's like, Hello, I'm texting you to ask for consent to talk about a situation that happened to me or a traumatizing thing. It's like, no, what? Wait, this, fuck people that. don't actually say that, do they? Oh my god, yes. No, they, they do not. That people, people what is that? It. It's just like, I'm not asking for consent. I'm just want to check in, like, yo, what just is a minute that? to chat I don't about know this what you're shit, saying, which but I was, it sounds I mean, weird. And if you just said to me, like, you know, I don't today. Can we talk tomorrow at twelve? Sounds great. Yeah. Let's talk tomorrow when you've got the time and it works for you. You don't just call your mate and go, uh, I was talking to Sally. Is your fucker said this? Can you believe it? And then you're on the phone, you know, driving to your appointment yeah. or you're picking your, your granny up. Or exactly. Something. You're just like, uh, um, uh. uh. Yeah, I've had, I've gotten, I've had to get a lot better at that and work at it to understand that I do not have to be available for everybody all the time when they need me no. or want my attention. You can no, absolutely don't. say, you know what? I'm not in a headspace to have this conversation right now. Can we talk in an hour or can we talk tomorrow at noon or whatever you need? You mm-hmm. do not need to be at the whim of everything and everybody around you. I think mm. you, Annabelle, have actually helped me be aware of this much more because when you whenever whenever you check in with me and we talk pretty much every day you always start off with how are you today how's your day how are you feeling what's going on and thank you for that because I've started to do this to make sure that all my interactions are the same it's really important yeah. Like business emails where I would usually just jump right in with, with the, the business at hand. The first couple lines now I really make sure are about the other person, checking mm. in about their life, creating a, a mutual respect in our, mm. in our interaction. I think it's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't just fucking blast somebody. No. You know, there are plenty of times where where I've texted you and you know when it's just us chit-chatting back and forth hi how are you how are you feeling today all that stuff is very natural for me but I have the propensity as well to with business stuff just blast in yeah. and frequently I'll talk to talk or whatever it is the business stuff or about the pod or whatever it is and then I go read it back and I go back to the beginning and I have to remember to go hey babe how are you doing and so I'm not just fucking bombarding your ass with, you know, all this stuff. And I think it's really important to do that. Just check in, I check the temperature of people. Yeah. Read the room. Read the room. Be aware of others and what they're going through. And 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not going to achieve anything by just dumping on somebody when they're not invested and when they're not open to it. It's a great thing to ask. I don't know what you're saying about the permission or whatever you just said. I, I don't know if I can go that far. <laughs> but um, just to say, hey, I'd like to ask you a question. Are you open to it? Hey, I want to share something with you. It's going to take a couple minutes. Is that okay? It's a really good Lucy's habit. Lucy's all, what's, what's consent? I don't, like, I, I, don't, I don't understand this consent. Yeah, good. What else do we have? Uh, ooh, possessiveness, controlling, one-upping, ooh, one-upping, backhanded comments, oh, no. being reductive, just like neggy, just a neggy Nancy. So does possessiveness, the first thing I think of is jealousy, which I've had a huge problem with in romantic, really, and, and in friendships. Friends, jealous friends are a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, just if if somebody's like, oh, oh, I'm hanging out with Lucy. Oh, I didn't know you were hanging out. You know, it's that sort of it's like, oh, can we hang out soon? Like, I'm really like, mm, that sort of it's like, okay. I, Ugh. Victim -y, no, victim, I don't like it. needing to be yeah, the first yeah, priority, yeah. needing to be the only friend, needing to be the best friend. Oh, a lot of red flags in there. It's messy territory. Or when they get miffy that you've got a new friend oh yeah and they're like well who's that i i don't know her i've never met her i know i have friends who have done that to me and i've done that to others so these are all red flags so oh god we all need to be aware of yeah um you know one thing that you do that i find to be really i wouldn't say it's a red flag it's not and layla does it as well what? it's not a red flag it's just like it's a pink it's a pink me. flag <laughs> It's not even a pink flag. It's a freak flag. What it's is like it? you will not mix your friendship groups. No, I don't like, mix anyone just... in my life. No, that gives me such <laughs> yeah, anxiety. It, it's so weird. No, why? No. No, why? <laughs> why? Because it's exhausting. Why? Why is it? Because, ugh, I don't even know. My hands are getting hot I thinking would say... about it. I don't even know. I would put this to you. It's only exhausting if you're trying to control the situation. It's only exhausting if you think that you need to control the situation or manage anyone. Yeah, I, that's or what it is. Have like, or like have any level of like codependency going on, then it's a stressful situation because you can't be okay unless everyone else is okay and you don't want these people to fight and you know, and all of that stuff. And it's like, for me, I'm just like, throw them all together, fucking make friendship soup. Some shit's going to work. Some th shit's going to backfire, you yeah. know, and it's, you know, and it's like, for me, it's exciting. It's like, if one of my friends hate each other, that's not my problem. Yeah. yeah that's not my problem. Right. You're grownups. Figure it out. Yeah. I guess it's because like you, I'm very selective about my friends at this point in my life and I don't have tons of friendships and I cultivate each friendship so deeply that I get, yeah. I give you all my attention when I'm with you and when I'm around you and it's very specific. Like I'm very different with you than I would be with another, you know, another friend who's a different personality. And so to get all of that together in a big mishmash to me would be like I would just like sit back in the corner and be like I you're diff wow that is so interesting I don't know if that sounds crazy I I'm just hearing myself say it out no, loud for the first I think time it, but it's I think it might be common it for me personally I am not different with my friends Obviously, it's not like I'm a different to, person. It's just like my, my extent. energy, my, all my energy is with you. And if I multiply that by 20, that's a lot of fucking energy to expend at once. But in a group situation, you don't have to have all your energy. With that's everyone. what I'm saying. I would just your go sit in the corner is... and just conserve my energy. <laughs> just let you, <laughs> let you guys duke it out. I don't know. I don't know. That's. I'm a little confused by what's coming out of my mouth. So you I don't, don't have like it. birthday parties or like you don't have events like birthday parties. What's gonna happen at your wedding? Uh, I'm probably just gonna get really drunk and 
No. <laughs> Absolutely not. You want to remember your wedding. <laughs> you do? You need to <laughs> prepare for this mentally. Let's talk about this off the air. Well, why do you think I haven't on. started planning my wedding yet? I'm terrified, okay? No. Look, Please. you just gotta let this go. You gotta let it go. <laughs> it is absolutely. I can't. It, I can't stand it. Is like, this I a control? Your other friends. This is a control issue, isn't it? Uh, it's completely a control issue. All right. Well, I'm a control freak. That's my red flag. Uh, there you um, go. Which is anybody wanting to get involved with me? I'm being really upfront about it right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I understand exactly what you're saying. And you would be proud. Uh, day before yesterday, I said to my friend Abigail that the three of us, her, you, and me, should all get a glass of wine soon. Okay. Yep. There she is. Yep. But I have been keeping... I would love to. I've been keeping you from people in my life because my mom wants to get together with you. My friends want to get together with you. And I've been keeping you from them, I have to admit. <laughs> it's like... Don't be stingy. It's like I protect my people. Like, I, I pr I'm protective of our relationship. Oh, my yeah. God. Everything that's coming out of my mouth is a red flag. No, you're fine. Oh my god! Listen, I've got. We just. I have we got just talked so about red flags being when people like oh like over possessiveness. I believe is the word. Yeah. Oh Jesus, you guys help! I have got so much love in me to go around. I've got enough love for all of your friends and your mum and you, and I'm not going to like all of them, and they're not all going to like me. <laughs> and I might embarrass you, or I might make you. You proud, embarrass me every week on this show. <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna be fine. It doesn't affect our relationship. It's not like I'm gonna like, you know, cuss out your mom or something. Oh my! That would be a problem. God, who knows? Okay, so this one's good. Um, encouraging you to be the worst version of yourself. Oh, this is a bad one. Now, something really spicy and painful <clears throat> came to mind in my life. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I think this is a really good one. I think that there are definitely people that we don't feel our best selves around. And it's like we always say, like, your body will let you know. Yeah. I think if you're finding that you need to either be drunk to be around somebody or whatever it is, that's probably not a good sign. And I think if you come walk away from a situation not liking how you've acted and not feeling good about yourself, there's something definitely to be questioned there. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do is I've got, and I'm working on it, is I've got a kind of, persona that I give to people to just you can you're you can have my you don't know me that well persona mm -hmm. and it's uh very my voice changes mm -hmm. um I'm very jokey very sarcastic I almost play dumb, bit of a bimbo. Uh, it's almost like I play the character of what people see me as who don't know me, who what they may think I am. Yeah. And I play that character a little bit and that's what I give to people. And that's when I feel that jumping out, I know that it's a sign that I need to maybe not spend time with that person yeah. if I can't just be me and I can only give them Annabelle Jones TM <laughs> then, TM yeah you know I, I it's not for me exactly um, oh I'm glad you said that I hope listeners got got what you just said because it definitely was as Oprah says an aha moment for me yeah this persona that we create where you got to watch the voice changes the voice changing Ooh, that's a big one. Your system is telling, you know, listen to yourself playing this persona of what you think people think you are. Mm. We slip into that. This red flag topic brings up something that I feel sad about. 
In my early 20s, I was going to New York City a lot for music, for my work. I spent more, more time in New York City a couple years than I did at home in L.A. working. And every time I would go to the city, I would stay with my friend, Emily, and uh, she became my backup singer. But what would happen when I would go to New York to stay with Emily was, for me, it was party time. I was making a lot of money, and I wanted to go out, and I wanted to do drugs and have fun. And Emily would let me stay with her, and she'd go out with me. She was my party buddy. Even though she was working her ass off as a waitress, she was trying to make ends meet. And her mm. friend, her friend Jamie called me one day, this girl I didn't know very well. And she was very nice to me on the phone, but she said, I need to talk to you about Emily. She said, I want you to know that you are a bad influence on Emily because you come to town and she wants to keep you happy and entertain you and keep up with you, but she can't. She's not in the same boat as you. And by you inviting her to go out and party with you all the time, for you enticing her by paying for everything, keeping her up late, you're really harming her. And she doesn't, she won't say it to you, but I'm saying it. I'm seeing her derail and I need you to be aware of it. Whoa. I know it hit me really hard and I thanked the girl Whoa. I said thank you very much for telling me that I, I will be aware of that and 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 it, it led to to changes and me stopping doing that because and that that goes back to what I'm saying about red flags like people don't realize that they are harming somebody else they are just operating at mm -hmm. the level that they're operating at and people coming into contact with, it's like chemistry. You put two chemicals together, you're gonna get a certain reaction. Each mm. of us has to take responsibility for that reaction and is it good for us or not? It was Emily's responsibility to take for herself to stand yeah. up to me and to say, no, I'm not going out with you tonight. I'm not gonna do the cocaine. I'm not going to do that. I have to be up early in the morning. I don't feel, yeah. I don't want to do drugs, whatever. But she wasn't, yeah. she wasn't willing to do that because of what she was getting out of, out of our relationship. But her friend loved her and stood up and said something. And I appreciated that because I wasn't trying to hurt my friend. I was just where I was at. And I was yeah. unaware. I was unaware of how I was affecting yeah. other people. That brings up something that I've been thinking about recently with a friendship is that I really don't appreciate being made to feel like it's your world and I'm just living in it. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of is along the lines of that without you realizing it was like your world and and she was just like spinning around in it exactly right completely not to you know not to your knowledge and um you know it can be as far as parting or it can be somebody expecting too much of you asking you treating you like you're a personal assistant yeah. like everything is expected of you like mm -hmm. you know everything's meant to go their way or whatever it is and you're meant to fall in line with what they want. I think that it's it can be something that we do unknowingly or that people do unknowingly. Yeah. I think there are some people who know exactly. Yes, what there are some doing. people who know exactly what they're doing. Um I think that's why it's each of ours responsibility for ourselves to mm. speak up and stand up for ourselves when we're not getting what we need from the relationship that's our responsibility because no one else is going to do it for you people can't read your mind they don't know what works for you and what doesn't they're not worried about it they're just thinking about themselves so you have to take care of yourself as they say put your own oxygen mask on first yeah yeah fucking hell damn that's interesting thanks for sharing that with us that was like kind of heavy put your own oxygen mask on first yeah, and just be aware of how your behavior is affecting other people. It's like we share this this journey with all of our friends and, and everyone else. And it's not... Guess what? 
It's not always about you. <laughs> Absolutely not. New news flash. It's not always news about you. Newsflash and not the center of the earth. Exactly. Um Wow, this was great. Really, really good. Yeah. Me, like, a lot to think me about. Me too. A lot to think about. I'm glad this was your idea to discuss this, and I'm really happy. <sighs> and what I my, my takeaways are create relationships built on mutual respect and mm. take responsibility for your own self safety and how you're affecting the world around you. You will be able to be so much more powerful and create so much more change and and positivity in this life and in this world if you are making sure that you've got your shit together first. You know, getting distracted, jumping on other people's roller coaster rides or, you know, trying to fix everyone and everything all the time it's not making you the most effective version of yourself not you i mean one mm-hmm. um and you know i would say that that's the what you're saying is put your own oxygen mask on yourself i think i'm just reiterating that by saying that's just really important in relationships with friends or romantic partners to make sure that you are really taken care of by you for yeah. you and then you will be able to be the absolute best version of yourself in your relationships and then i'd like to end with this really great quote that jeff my therapist said oh, to me good. a few weeks ago in therapy that i've been waiting to share with you oh love it can't wait everything outside of you is an aspect of you thank you jeffrey Love you, Lucy. (laughs) Love you, bye. (laughs) Love you, bye.